students, teachers, government employees, and social media executives all under one roof. Their goal, to combat the scourge of fake news. A campaign Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. launched in August. What we are fighting for is the truth. Because the very first casualty of all of these is the truth. This forum, officials say, will be followed by a roadshow to schools. Filipinos are especially vulnerable to disinformation because of the amount of time they spend on social media. Nearly 90% of 16 to 64-year-olds are on Facebook. And according to the 2021 Borders Institute Digital News Report, 9 out of 10 Filipinos are exposed to fake news. But it certainly isn't a problem that's unique to this country. Some have had disastrous consequences, like the allegations of vote rigging in the 2020 presidential election in the United States that led to the attack on the capital. And during war, such as the one Israel is waging on Gaza now, disinformation can spread even faster. And so what the breaking news shelf does is to actually show you content from vetted authoritative news outlets such that when you search Gaza hospital explosion, you're not bombarded with disinformation. Analysis of the bombing of Al Ali Baptist Hospital in Gaza on October the 17th are inconclusive. But in the case of the 2022 election, researchers say there's ample evidence that this information helped propel Marcos to the presidency, something that casts a shadow on his effort to address the problem. They're trying to build a monument for the president's father for his supposed contribution and the guerrilla war. We've pointed out already that it has no basis in history, in fact. Critics say the government may be on the right track, but the real test is whether it can and will fact-check whitewashed narratives of the Marcos family's role during a dark period in the Philippines' history. Barnabilo, Al Jazeera, Manila. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.